welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing delirium. Now, if you guys don't already know, on our YouTube channel, we have a psychiatry for the USMLE Step 1 playlist where we're uploading all of these psych videos in, in sequential order. So go ahead and check that out on our YouTube channel right there. And uh, with that being said, also don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let's just dive right deep into it. Let's talk about delirium. So delirium is a form or a acute waxing and weaning level of consciousness. And this usually occurs with an acute onset. This is a very rapid uh, finding that you'll see in patients. And it usually occurs within 12 to 24 hours, patients will present with a uh, delirium and in a delirious state. In this case, patients are gonna have a rapid decrease in the attention span, as well as a level of arousal. And it's usually characterized by a few key hallmark things that you should be aware of. If you see these things, you should first think delirium unless you're pushed towards something else, okay? And these key characterizations are disorganized thinking right people aren't gonna be able the patients with delirium aren't gonna be able to talk to you clearly and straightforward this is also made worse due to their decreased attention span uh, they're also gonna have hallucinations that are often visual and that's important because a lot of times patients might present with uh, uh, in, a, in a question stem they might present with um, saying that oh I see God or I see angels or demons or stuff like that so it's very easy to get that mixed up with you know just just being uh, not like psychotic or whatever but they could just be having a hallucination because they're delirious and we're gonna talk about how to how to associate delirium and how to diagnose it as delirium and not something else in a second but keep in mind hallucinations is very common with patients who are delirious especially visual hallucinations so if they say they see something like this yeah they're having a visual hallucination all right, so another uh, characterization is going to be disturbances in their sleep-wake cycles. Patients might have cognitive dysfunction as well as agitation. So all of these characterizations should clue you into delirium first. That's the key thing. Another thing to realize about delirium is that it is reversible, and that's very important because a lot of other things like de dementia is not reversible, but delirium is. If you treat the underlying cause of delirium, you can get rid of the patient being delirious. And this could be caused by medications as well. So if you're giving, giving elderly patients anticholinergics, uh, especially on high dose, patients might develop delirium. Now. When it comes to delirium, you might want you want to be very uh, comfortable with the clinical symptoms. The characterizations that we talked about earlier are definitely something you should know, but you should also know that delirium usually occurs secondary to something else, another illness. Usually in a USMLE step question, you're going to see this being presented to you as a patient who just got out of surgery. So let's just write that down. So a patient who just got out of surgery is, uh, uh, you realize that they have an infection, a temperature of, let's say it's 104, greater than 104, right? So they have an infection. And because the infection, you see that they're delirious. They ha they're having hallucinations. They're not talking to you properly. They're having uh, uh, altered day and night uh, sleep patterns. All those characterizations should clue you in to a patient being delirious and not delusional or psychotic. That's very important. And usually you'll see an altered mental status in the hospital. They're not gonna be alert and oriented times four, guys. They're gonna be they're gonna show as altered mental status. And when you're diagnosing a patient with delirium, it's very straightforward. It's actually pretty easy and it's usually done clinically during the patient visit. That's really important because there are other tests you can do, but to be honest with you, this is pretty straightforward enough for someone to understand whether or not a patient has altered mental status. And if, uh, if they have a history of an infection or a disease, or if they just went through trauma or substance abuse slash withdrawal, you can assume that they're, they're a little delirious instead of being uh, psychotic or having a mental break. But if clinically you can't diagnose it, you can also use an EEG. Um, which is gonna which is gonna map out the brain waves and the function of the brain waves, and you will see in an EEG it's gonna be abnormal in delirium, whereas in dementia it's gonna be normal brain waves uh, that are gonna pop up on the EEG. 
Keep in mind though, this is not the best test to use. This is rarely done. It's just something you should know in the back of your mind. So delirium is gonna be abnormal. Dementia is gonna be normal. So for visual purposes, here is an EEG. As you can see, uh, the normal uh, EEG has n these waveforms that are not, you know, high in amplitude. Uh, they're pretty small. They're pretty uniform, as uniform as it can be. All of them are very similar. But when you look at this delirium one, you can see that everything is abnormal. All of them have high amplitudes, right? You see how this is higher than something over here. You can see that this one does not correspond to this one. This one does not correspond to this one right they're all different whereas these right here are somewhat similar okay so these waveforms are a little bit different they're jagged and you can clearly see they're abnormal in delirium they are abnormal in dementia the EEG findings are going to be normal so let's talk about delirium and dementia and keep in mind we have a whole video on dementia coming up next but just so you guys have a little bit of an insight. Delirium is going to be something that's acute. It occurs rapidly. You're going to have a waxing and waning presentation. Patients might present being normal one second and then a little, you know, a few minutes down the road, they seem a little agitated. They're having hallucinations and then they go back to um, being normal. And this is going to be, sorry, it's going to be reversible as well. You're going to easily be able to treat the delirium if you treat the underlying condition that's causing it. Whereas dementia, dementia is a chronic condition. It happens over a long period of time. It's not acute. And in this case, you can see a progressive decline in cognitive function and motor function. It's going to continuously go down, and it's irreversible. So these uh, are the key differences between delirium and dementia. Now, when it comes to treatment for delirium, it's pretty straightforward, actually. Uh, you're going to treat the underlying cause. If you get rid of the infection, if you get rid of the substance abuse, etc., you're going to get rid of the delirium. But while you do that, you want to maintain O2 levels, and you want to treat the pain because most of these patients are in pain, especially if they just got out of surgery. You, did, you bet they got pain. So you want to treat that. That'll help with the delirium. And also, you want to keep the patient hydrated because they might expend themselves a little bit too much and become dehydrated and you don't want that either. You wanna make sure there's a calm and quiet environment around them, but if all this fails, if everything fails and you have to go to pharmacotherapy, the drug of choice is gonna be haloperidol, an antipsychotic. It's used to control the agitation and the, psych the psychotic symptoms. That's the drug you want to use right here. That's very, very important. I'm gonna write high yield for you guys, just so you guys remember this, but this is the most important thing. And the one thing you should not do to a delirious patient is give them benzodiazepines. On a step question, it may seem like the right answer by giving them a benzodiazepine because you might want to sedate them a little, but that is not the right thing to do. So do not give them a benzo. It'll worsen the confusion and they'll also cause the patients to become more sedated and put them in a dangerous situation. Now with that, being said, I hope this helped with understanding what is delirium. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And when you do hit that bell notification, and don't forget to watch our psychiatry playlist. Go ahead and continue on to the next video.